¿Qué tal, amigo? ¿Cómo le va? Eh, quiero algo que comer y... ¿Dónde dormir? Puedo pagarle. ¿No habla español? ¿Inglés? Un americano. Aténdolo. Please come in, señor. Gracias. ¿Quiere lavarse? Senor, he must go to town. Somehow he looked like a man who would have to go to town. Aren't you staying? No, oh, I've had a change of plans. When your husband comes back with the police, tell him I'm sorry I couldn't wait. <laughs> Gracias por todo. Resting against your shelter. This is for animals. The house is for men. Come. Oh, there's nothing. We will have a look at it. Come. He's got his hands up. Give him a chance! What is it? You were dreaming, my son. You shouted in your sleep. Sorry I disturbed you. Sleeping men shout in this fashion in prison, in the battle lines of armies, and when they are being hunted. What do you want me to do? Confess my sins? I want you to have peace. Then leave me alone. As you wish. Father, I will rest your arm again. No doubt the pain was what disturbed you. No, 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 it's not much. It hardly hurts in any. But you saw it yourself, it's only a little wound. And yet, Father, here's the whole trouble. Because of this wound or something, I. I can't move my arm. I can't lift it. You mean lift it as a man would who was ordered to surrender? The police. Yeah. They've tracked me for two days and nights. They'll be here in the morning. This is it. The end of the line. Even the police are not always so merciless. You understand? I saw it. I saw it happen to another man. He couldn't lift his arm either. He stood up in a lonely place at daybreak. Somebody shot him. Somebody who shot him. Come and lie down, my son. You don't have to talk about these. But I do. I mean, I have to know the answer, Father, and there isn't much time. It began about a year ago. You might not believe it to look at me now, but in those days I was running an oil field. Lynn Banner! I got a flash for you, Lynn. 
Drive me down to Southfield, will you, Herb? Got a broken bit down there. You better go to the office first. You know what day this is? Wednesday. And the ghost is supposed to walk this afternoon. We got payroll trouble? Not another stake-up. I thought they were going to fly it in like last time. They couldn't get a plane. Earl Mahoney, you know the guy from Petroleum Finance Corporation? He was bringing it up himself by rail car, one of those putt-putt jobs. A bank vice prexy on a rail car? He must have been out of his mind. He had guts, Lynn. He knew how vital it was after all the trouble we had. He wanted to be personally responsible. Don't take it so hard, Lynn. We've got insurance, you know. Great, but meanwhile, what am I supposed to pay my men with lock washes and seashells? They like money, moolah. You know what I mean. Money, let me see. Twelve paydays a year, we get three stick-ups. Where's Mahoney now? He's in the office. Yeah, we'd better step on it, huh? Who's this guy? Corporal Valdez. He was in charge of the guard. Only guard left? That's what they say. You better get Doc Fellows to take care of him. He's on his way over. All I want is a pair big enough to ride in. They don't have to fit. Hello, Vanner. Hi, Mr. Mahoney. Looks like we're in a little trouble. Uh, we'll get that money back. Every last cent of it. We'll get this fellow before dark. You're not taking off again. <laughs> you bet I am. The police commandant has assigned a mounted squad to do the tracking. And I guess they're going to need me. Anything you want me for before I take off? Well, yes. Frankly, could you give me some idea of just what happened? I only got a sketch. I'd like to make out a report. Leon Tampico's calling. I'll call back in five minutes. It was a rough deal. We were right on that hairpin turn back at the gorge. You know the one? Yeah. Oh, thanks. This fellow was track walking there. Never would have slowed down for him, but he, he had a company badge on and looked like an American. About your height, uh, stocky built. Thought maybe he'd been sent out to meet us. Then all of a sudden, the sky busted open and the shooting started. He got three of the guards with the first burst, but I fell off the car. Okay. It's probably what saved your life. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, I'll put it all in writing when I get back. Good luck. <laughs> so long. Get Tempe. Miss Ware's waiting in there. Get a cigarette, Herb. Hi, baby. What are you doing here? I couldn't stay at the ranch. This is much too exciting. Hmm. So is having your pocket picked. Sometimes I'd settle for that. Hello. Yes, Mr. Hubble. Yes, that's it. The entire payroll. Yes, I imagine they'll cancel the insurance, but it can't be helped. Okay. Thank you. The doctor finished with that corporal? He's working on him now. Get a report from him and ask him to see me when he gets through, will you? Sure. Nice. Like a drink? Not now. I don't want to keep you. Was I going somewhere? I thought you'd be going on the posse. <laughs> Not me. Lynn, you don't mean that. Sure, I mean it. Well, they'll think you're chicken. So I'm chicken. That stuff shirt, Earl Mahoney, will get all the credit for catching the thief. He won't catch him. But the posse. It's not a posse. It's a, an armed police squad with some gringo kibitzes. Besides, posses don't catch anything but colds in the head. And this one won't either. They think that guy's headed to the coast. Why wouldn't he? Because he's an American. What's that got to do with it? Yeah, an American would stay right on the railroad where you don't leave a trail. He could keep on all night that way, and along toward morning, he'd uh, cross over to the high road through some pass. El Tajon Pass, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, that'd be his best out. It's rough, but once he got across, he could hit the road. That's what he'd do, Lynn. If he knows the country well, and he did know it well. Oh, he must have planned this carefully. Oh, you bet he did. But if you actually caught this stick-up guy, you doped it out so brilliantly, if you brought him in all by yourself, I'll admit I'm crazy enough to wonder if I've doped it right. That's all I wanted to hear. Hmm? Marie, would you call my dad's foreman, Pedro, at the ranch? Oh, hold your horses. Just one horse, darling, the one you're going to ride. Tell him to catch the quarter horse, the one Dad uses. Have you got a gun? What would I want a gun for? Never mind, we'll get one at the ranch. Come on, Sheriff. We don't want to keep that bandit waiting. Here we go. The horse must have been used to rocky country. He followed the trail up the pass all night as if he'd had eyes in his feet. 
for some reason, I was asking myself what I was doing there. Wondered if I hadn't been out of my mind to start on this chase in the first place, just to show off like a, a kid turning handsprings on his girl's front lawn or something. This wasn't a game of cops and robbers. We were playing for keeps. It boiled down to a duel between me and the unknown fellow waiting up in the rocks or, or struggling on ahead of me. Never had the slightest doubt that he was there and that I'd find him. But I didn't like it. It was all wrong somehow. Maybe I was afraid. But I don't think I was afraid for myself. It was more like... Like being scared of what was going to happen. The moment which had to come soon now and would come. As if it had been determined long ago and couldn't be stopped by any act of mine. Oh, you see, Father, I'm trying to justify myself. Explain what happened, though. I I never can explain it. Not in any way that would make the answer come out right. Then suddenly I saw the man. Get your hands up. Both of them over your head. Get them up. Some posse man, shooting a guy with his hands up. Told you to put them both up. I couldn't. My arm's busted. That's what I was trying to tell you. I didn't hear you. Where'd I hit you? That's nothing. Maybe I'm lucky at that. Pick that coffee pot up, will you? Hey, didn't you used to work for Bolsa Grande? Sure, I was a rigger. Sam Tevlin's my name. I thought so. And I know you, Mr. Vanner, and you don't act no different now than when you were down at the plant. All right, pull yourself together. I'm going to stash your stuff and take you back. What for? You know what for. I never took that payroll, if that's what you mean. How'd you know about it? Well, I... All right, we'll talk about that later. Well, if I took it, where is it? Did I hide it out somewhere? Have I got it on? Why don't you search me? You got it on you, we'll find it. If you've hidden it out, we'll find that, too, all in due time. Come on. As we started down, I think I felt weaker than he did. I was shaky and sick because I... I knew in my heart I'd shot too soon. I hadn't given him a chance to explain about his arm. I felt pity for him. Oh, easy, man. Oh, my arm. Oh, God. You've been sitting at a desk too much, Mr. Posse, man. You're kind of soft in the belly. I didn't figure I'd have to pack you out of my back. Oh, buddies, aren't we? One pal don't mind helping another. Especially when he shot him with his hands up. That's a lie, and you know it. Do I? Come on. Maybe I ought to pack you on my back. waiting for you, huh? Yeah, could be. I don't suppose there's any use telling you again I didn't take that payroll. You'll have to tell that to the proper authorities. That's about what I figured you'd say. Look, Mr. Vanner, if those company guards get a hold of me now, I haven't got a chance. Give me a break, will you? Turn me loose right here. I'm not so beat up that I won't make out if you let me take the horse. Can't do it, Tevlin. I was half tempted to give him the chance, but it was too late. I had to see this through the way I'd started. Walt, you sure did a great job. You certainly did. And say, did you hear about the reward? The reward? Yeah, the head office put it up last night, right after you left. Two thousand bucks. Congratulations, boss. Nice point, Lynn. Boy, oh, boy, that helps. Hey, two thousand bucks. Never ride in a pal's boots unless he wears 12D. Well, my boy, I understand you're to be congratulated. You've done a fine job. Well, I'm not even sure he's the right man, but at least he's suspect number one. 
Uh, Lieutenant, my company has a vital interest in this matter. Uh, would you object if I asked the prisoner a few questions? No, go ahead, senor. But it don't take too long. Oh, no. Where is he, Clark? In the back office, boss. Well, let's go and see if we can find something out. Thank you, Lieutenant. What's going on in there? I suppose you'd call it a cross-examination. That's your man, all right, Lieutenant. He doesn't feel like talking, but I can positively identify him. My department will check it out, Mr. Mahoney. Good. How is he? In bad shape. I'm going to give him a hypo. Will you stay with him a minute? Oh, any use telling you again? I didn't take that payroll. Cold, cold in here. Better. on her way. Thank God. Examination must have been a form of torture in his condition. There wasn't what killed him. What then? A bullet. Right there. I thought that only nicked him. No, no. It punctured the pulmonary artery. He bled internally. heard of any reward when I went after this guy, and I don't have to be paid for bringing him in. Why do you keep saying paid? It's not paid. It's just a sort of prize, an honor you're entitled to. Oh, Lynn. Think what $2,000 can mean to us. Oh, I'm not going to take it. I'll call it sentiment or superstition or anything you like. I'd call it insanity. You wouldn't borrow money from the company, and I can understand that. But now that they want to give you some, you refuse. Can't you see it from my angle? How do you expect me to feel? I don't mean to be rude, but I don't think this is your affair. I thought it was. Seems to me I remember starting you on this, right? Yes, you started me, but... Well, now it's something else. Something between me and... Your precious conscience? If you hadn't been cleared at the inquest, it might be different. I won't take it, Lynn. I've taken a lot and tried to understand, but this is just a little bit too much. You're breaking our engagement? No, you are, with this crazy attitude. I've waited and hoped and tried to see your point of view. I didn't know I was being taken. You never meant to marry me. All this talk about money was just an excuse. What you wanted was an alibi. Any reason was all right, as long as you could put me off. Well, you've got your way, and now I'm not changing my mind. This time, it's finished. We're through. You're yelling. I will yell. Oh, Lynn, what's happened to us? I don't... I don't know, baby. I... guess we both found out at the same time, didn't we? We'd never get along. I just love you to pieces, Lynn. But I know I'll never understand you as long as I live. Remember, it's, it's right here on this table. 
I wish you'd keep it. That's very gallant of you. Just the right thing to say. But I'm leaving it. You might need the money to put in a blind man's cup or something. San Fico, 324. Is Mr. Vanner calling Mr. Hubble? If he's not there, please try him at home. Thanks. Hello. Oh, Mr. Hubble, this is Lynn Vanner. I'm very sorry to disturb you at this time of night, but yes, I believe it is urgent. Well, sir, I hate to put you in a spot, but I'm resigning my position with the company. That's right. Well, I know it is sudden, but no, sir. Where to, senor? Just give me about 100 pesos worth of ticket. In what direction, senor? You name it, now go there. First train out. Do I understand you wish a change of scenery? Any place will do? That's right. How would you like Los Santos? It's a nice little place. Los Santos? Yes. Today we ship a coffin there. For such shipments, a ticket must be bought. And this one has been paid for, too, according to the rules. But today, no one is using it. All right, I'll take it, thanks. You're welcome, senor. Save me trouble, too. Would you be kind and give these to the baggage agent at Los Santos? I'll do that. Good luck, senor. I knew there was only one dead man who could be going from La Mancha that day, but I didn't care. I'd accept that much from Sam Tebble, my transportation to a new life. After all, we'd been traveling companions before. <laughs> I figured that was ahead of me. Nothing behind. I was a lucky guy, I told myself. Why not? I was still young enough, reasonably strong, and this new life could be a lot of fun. All I had to do was hand some papers to a baggage agent, and then the last thread that held me to the past would be gone. I could go anywhere I felt like, do anything I wanted. Los Santos! Los Santos! Another thought. Someone had paid to have Sam's body sent home, and the person who had paid would meet the train. Well, whoever it was, I didn't want to see them. I was finished with the whole business. I just had enough of it. I made up my mind to make tracks getting away from that station. Senor. Hey, Recibo.
tranquila. Sí, señor. As I live and breathe, what is there, Len? Carlos, you old son of a gun. Como estás, there? Muy bien, amigo. Bien. Oh, you're getting a little fat. Oh, what is a few pounds between friends? And you know something? I will always buy a drink for a doggone hero. Paquito, dos más a la mesa. Sí, Let señor. sit at the table, eh? You know, I was just reading about you. The guy and the cook sent me this. It was in the Veracruz paper. Oh. Keep it for your scrapbook. Didn't know you had it in you. Mm. Uh, Salute, Pesetas, and here's luck. Luck? Oh, that is what we have. Plenty of it, Lynn. Biggest blinking oil strike in years. Right here. Only 50 miles from Los Santos. Maybe I ought to cut myself a slice of it. Oh, there'll be enough for everybody. Man, you should have seen that first gosher. Gosher? What is it, a gosher? Uh, with or without the accent. It's 50,000 barrels a day. All high gravity stuff. Hey, Lynn. Why don't you come and have a look at it with me tomorrow, huh? Eh? Oh, come Padre, you got yourself a date. Bueno. So I took a job in the new field. After a couple of months, I quit. I kept thinking I had to get back to that town and find somebody. Crazy enough, I couldn't seem to think of anyone but this person. As you guessed it, Father, it was the woman I'd seen for a few seconds on a railway station platform. Tevlin's widow. I found out that much about her. Then I found out where she lived. Finally, I hitched a ride out of town. That was the first time I saw the ranch. It was neat and comfortable enough, yet it had that sorry kind of a look a place gets when there's no man to take care of it. You know that it looked different once when there was hope. People started out to build something. And then, well, they let go or were defeated in their purpose. This was where a woman lived her life. And I wondered what the power was that had drawn me there. My share in her secret, or was it just herself, her beauty, or her personality, which was really unknown to me and only half guessed at. I hadn't thought of any special way to explain my visit. Figured I'd just knock on the door and see what happened. Who is it? Well, are you Mrs. Tablin? That's right. Won't you come in? Sit down. Thanks. Your name, please? Brown. Lindley Brown. We've seen each other before, haven't we, Mr. Brown? No, I don't think so. Oh. I hadn't expected anyone so soon. In answer to the ad. Oh. You understood the term. I can't pay wages, but I'll share the profits after the stock is rounded up and sold. Oh, I see. Uh, I wasn't quite sure about the wages. Oh, I thought that was clear. It's right here. Foreman for Ranch Co-op. You must have understood it. Well, that'll be all right, I think. We run between three and four hundred heads. The range is good, and we have a nice calf crop. I have one Indian vaquera helping me, but I've no way to round out brand and sell. I should imagine it'd be a little hard to keep house and ride herd, too. Yes, even for a person capable of handling livestock, which I'm not. I've often thought of giving up and going back to the States. When I had to decide, I'd always try once more, hang on a little longer. My husband and I bought this place with savings, and he used to work in his spare time. Now my husband is dead. Well, I, I think you're quite right to keep it. A place of your own can mean a great deal. My husband used to work for the oil companies. Have you ever worked in the oil fields, Mr. Brown? Oh, yes, I have. But where I grew up, oil and cattle were a team nudging each other for the same hunk of ground. I can pass myself off for a cowboy when I have to. Get a load of those boots. He's no cowboy. Mike, this is Mr. Brown. This is my son, Michael. Hi, Michael. Well. Mike, you're right about these boots. They're no good. But I've had the other kind, no kid. And I can roll my own cigarettes when I have to. I'd want to be quite sure that you understood the work and that you were competent to do it. Things have run down here. It won't be easy. I'd like to try. Is he going to stay, Ma? 
We haven't decided yet. Well, if he is, I'm moving out. I'll tell you, Michael, I'm looking for a place to work, and your mother wants someone to help her the way you do. Oh, wouldn't it be all right with you if I just sort of hung around and helped your mom? It's okay with me, if that's what you want, Mom. All right. We'll try it and see how it goes. I suppose you have to get your things from town. Well, I can do that this evening. I'll show you the room you can use. So now I understood. She was stuck for somebody to work the ranch. She naturally would be with Sam gone. That ad in the local paper must have been a last resort for her. But for me, it was a chance sent from heaven. to do with the late Mr. Tevlin, only with Mrs. Tevlin. I'd come because I'd seen a woman on a station platform. Now that I'd talked to her, I made up my mind I was going to be near her, even if Sam Tevlin came back from the dead to try and stop me. Well, hi, pal. How are you feeling this morning? Okay, I always feel okay. Swell. Well, that little paint your horse? Yep, what'd you catch him for? He likes to be let loose. Well, maybe you'd want to slap a saddle on him and ride out with me. I'll tell you why I can't go. There's Indians around here. No kidding, sometimes they attack. Then I have to take care of Ma, you see? Sure, well, you do that. So long, Mike. See you tonight. So long. Did Mr. Brown ask you to go with him? I couldn't go. There's an attack. some tracks and we followed him and pretty soon Mike here heard this little bull calf bellowing. Just morning like he sounded gosh awful. He was dry gulps with his mammy in a little canyon where the spring had dried up. We got him out of there though, didn't we? Next week I'm gonna dam that creek so there'll be some water up that way when the bad months come. Well, it says when enough water gets in it, I can swim there. It's fine, but right now it's getting pretty near somebody's bedtime. Ah, oh, gee, Ma. If you want to be a vaquero, you've got to take time out to go to sleep. Can I fool around with Lynn a little while? Not tonight, honey. Mr. Brown has some work to do. You go along now. I'll be in later to read you that story. I was going to help him with that bridle he's making, but I guess it'll keep. 
You'll have to keep. I have something else I want you to do. Will you come with me, please? Sure. I had the cult in here today, and he broke through the fence. I'd like you to fix it. Okay, I'll start first thing in the morning. I want it done now. Well, isn't it a little late to begin wrangling fences? When there's work to be done, you'll just have to do it, if you expect to stay here. She had a real genius for concocting that kind of assignment. Every night after work, in daytimes too, if I had ten minutes to spare, she'd come up with something new. And generally, she'd find some excuse to be around and watch me. If she could have stood over me with a whip, that would have pleased her better still. I almost quit a hundred times, but always managed to hold out because I knew something was boiling inside her, eating her up, and I wanted to find out what it was. So I took everything she handed out, waited for the next move. Hi, pal. <laughs> Want to try it? Sure, come on. How do you put your fingers? Well, let's see. First one would be about like that. And it's pretty good. A little farther back. Press harder. You do it. Tired already? All right, what'll be? The one you were playing. Oh, what about the doggies? You like that? As I was out walking one morning for pleasure, I spied a cowpuncher a riding along. How his hat was thrown back and his spurs was a jingle. As he approached me a singing this song. Yippee ti yi yo. Get along, little doggy. It's your misfortune, but none of my own. Yippee ti yi yo. Get along, little doggy. For you know that Wyoming will be your new home. Did you ever go to Wyoming? No, but I always had a hankering to. If you went, would you come back? Sure, you bet I would. Chances are I'm not going anyway. What's dead? I mean, what does it mean, dead? Dead? Well, that's when you're not here anymore. When you stop being what you are. When you start to be something else? I guess so, Mike. I don't know much about those things. Most people don't. My mom does. Does she? Yeah, she told me about it. My dad's not coming back anymore. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. He's in heaven. Heaven. What a place. I bet you nothing happens up there much. It's supposed to be all right. Those angels, they look like ladies. Are there men angels, too? They're both kinds, I guess. They have spears. Sure they do. I saw it in the picture. I had a spear once, but I lost it. Michael. I'm out here with Lynn, Mom. Lynn, dear, it's bedtime. I'm coming. Doggone. Wished I hadn't lost that spear. I lost my bow and arrow, too. It was a swell one. My dad made it for me. When he comes back, he'll... Well, he's not coming back. I told you that. Can you make a bow and arrow? Well, I guess I could. I, I could sure try. Will you tomorrow? Well, yeah. Yeah, I will. Gee, thanks, Lynn. Okay. You better go on in now. Okay. You won't forget the bow and arrow, will you? No, I won't forget. You're a pal. Well, good night. Good night, son. Son. <laughs> There I was, moving into something I'd never bargained for. 
I was picking up a ready-made family for myself and loving it. All except one thing. Ellen wouldn't change her manner to me. At least when we were alone. In front of Mike, she was nice as pie. Can I go out and shoot now, Mom? Sure. You coming, Lynn? In a minute. I'm fixing to help your mother with these dishes. Dishes? Holy smoke. I can make out without help, thank you. How long do we have to keep on this way? I don't know what you mean. The way we are now, like strangers mashed together against their will, not knowing what to do about it. What would you suggest we do about it? Well, we could act a little human once in a while. Like at the table, you never say a word to me except pass this, pass that. When the meal's through, no time for anything. I go to work, Mike goes to play, and you can sit around and talk a little bit. People do that. Just pour an extra cup of coffee. Oh, if you don't like that, we could go uptown. Sure, in the evenings. We could walk around the plaza and listen to the band, look in the shop windows. Maybe even take in one of those old-time movies. Now, Mike would like that. We have no money to waste on shows. But we have to do something, don't you see? Even if we, if we fight and yell and throw things. What should we fight about? About anything. And at least we prove that we're alive. This way, it's nothing. The days go by, I don't know where they go or what's wrong. It's like a sickness or like being goofy or something. We just stand still. You feel it, too. You know what I mean. Well, even hate would be... Hate? What do you know about hate? Well, not much, thank God. Hate can be sweeter than anything. You hurt yourself. It's just a scratch. you were having a big Indian war today. It's Sunday. You said we could swim at the dam Sundays. Oh, you can't go alone, dear, and I can't go with you. Oh, gee, Pablito can swim. He's going to teach me. Lynn has irrigation ditch all made, and it's real deep. <laughs> all right, go on. Gee, thanks. I don't blame him. Oh, it's there. Wow. I... It's always that way this season. Short of going swimming with the kids, I don't know what to do about it myself. Plus, I use the family swimming pool here, like Mike did yesterday. You're most welcome to it, I'm sure. You mean I have your gracious permission to dunk myself? You know I don't care what you do. Oh, you're too kind. You can't miss a chance like this.
was working one time on a tramp steamer down in the Caribbean. We were quarantined for a couple of weeks in a company port. It was a case of typhus on board. Well, maybe we were lucky or it wasn't typhus or something. Anyway, when we put out to sea again, the captain stopped the ship and let us all go overside for a swim. And it was a great feeling. You know something? Today was just as good. Yes, sir, that little old barrel's all right for a Sunday dip. Imagine you had more room in the Caribbean. Hmm. Are uh, you, uh, you through with this? You can take it to your room and read it. Oh, no, it's fine right here, thanks. You listen to me for a minute? Listening to you is just a waste of time. You weren't wasting your time when you went to my room and looked through my things. My wallet, for instance. You'd seen me at the station. You wanted to know if my real name was Brown. You found out it wasn't. I found out you were the man who murdered my husband. Murder? Uh, that's a pretty big word. Generally, before you hang that on a man, you investigate what he's done. Most times, a, a lawyer presents the evidence, a jury considers it, and a judge passes a sentence. But what are you, judge, jury, and prosecuting attorney all rolled into one? Did Sam Tevlin have a judge, jury, and prosecuting attorney? I was working for a company, and he'd stolen money from that company. At least that's what everyone believed, and I did too. Did you believe it? What made you so sure? Did Sam tell you he was a thief? Or did you forget to give him time to tell you? Well, it wasn't time for... Go on. What do you know about it? You speak as if you'd been there. You were the one who started asking questions. Well, let me ask you something. Why did you shoot Sam when he had his hands up? He only had one up. I yelled at him. Nobody knew that. Nobody except... No one except you, Mr. Vanner. You and Sam. But Sam's dead, so that leaves you all by yourself. And you're quite right. There wasn't a word about it in the clipping I read. Would you like to know how I found that out? I found out from Sam. They sent him home to me. You should remember that. You got a free ride with him. Well, I looked at Sam's body. A wife is apt to do that if her husband is sent home dead and she doesn't know what killed him. I saw where the bullet went in, just below the muscle of the chest. His arm was raised when it hit because the muscle dropped over the hole and sealed it up. That's why he bled internally. Oh, yes, Mr. Vanner. I know how my husband died. You were a great hero. You were very brave that morning at daybreak. Ellen. Won't you please go now? Ellen, everything you've said is true. I think I shot too soon. Oh, he yelled something at me, but I couldn't make out what it was. And, well, I thought he was playing a trick on me, and so I... You got the shakes. You were a coward and you killed because you were a coward. Believe me, it wasn't that. Men who get the shake shouldn't go on posse rides. They should clean pigsties. They should crawl in the dirt. I've been doing those things I thought you knew. I'll send you your share of the money when the stock is sold. I can get somebody else to round up for me. We were talking about Sam. I was with him when he died and he didn't ask for you. He asked for his mother. What's the point of telling me that? I'm telling you because his wifely loyalty doesn't fool me a bit. Sam didn't think of you when he was dying alone, groping for one thought or feeling that would help or comfort him. Don't you think most men would turn to their wives under such circumstances? I don't know. It would depend on the man. And the woman. And the way they'd live together. Oh, it's a small thing. Might not mean anything at all. But it's part of the feeling I've had about you and Sam. It's hard to put into words, but it seems to me you two were strangers. Is that wrong? Ah, oh, people can be married and even have a child and buy a ranch the way you did. Never like each other much or even know each other. From the looks of this place, I don't believe you spent a year all told here as your husband. It was more fun to buck the oil fields for a bankroll and make love to Tampico dance hall girls. Isn't that about the way it was between you two? Yes, that's just the way it was. But some women would kill you for saying so. But not you. People get punished for killing and you don't figure to get punished. You operate from your brains, not your feelings. You've let me work here knowing who I was because you needed me. 
Besides, what fun it was to ride me when I had no comeback, wasn't it? Sweet. It was wonderful. Yes, and the best of it was I couldn't hit you in the face and walk out on you for six months the way Sam used to. You didn't learn to hate men from me or from anything you found out about me. You learned from Sam. You've been saving something up against all men, and you've enjoyed letting it out on me. Well, you've won, Mrs. Tamlin. Our partnership is washed up, and you may keep my share of the profits, if any, with my compliments. you say goodbye. Unless I'm saying hello. Hello, then. I don't know what love is, Father, unless it's one person's recognition of another or one great experience that breaks down the walls of self. Well, we had it, Ellen and I. We'd begun at the place where most people never get the final explanations. People pay for such explanations, but there are also rewards. Yes, Father. We found the greatest reward of all. Our marriage. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Res is equesimus Domine superos famulus tuos. El Instituto Istuis, y us por pagación en humana y general solinasti, benignos asiste. Ut que te autor y un buntur, te auxiliante servente, per Cristo en Domino Nostum. Amén. I could hardly follow the priest's words because I kept thinking, she's mine now, she's mine. That day I was sure the devils that had haunted me since I shot Sam Devlin were gone for good. But they weren't through with me yet, Father, as I found out. Give me some rice. Not now. I want a big handful. Michael, you are a wonderful best man. Yeah, thanks for standing up with me, chum. Well, that's okay. I got something for you. Yeah? Good luck, compadre. Oh, thanks. Nice. Here. What's that? Ellen, oh. look at the wedding present Mike got us. Oh, they're beautiful. Can I try them on now? Well, they'll fit. I caught one of your old boots for size. Oh, let me try them on anyway. Let's see. Mm. Here. Oh, yeah. Well, then I good luck. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> Oh, um, well, I guess a bit of something out of that. Just perfect. Well, I guess I'll see you later. Oh, well, I'm a real cowboy. Now. Absolutely perfect. You like the butterflies? You got real ones. Yeah, well, they're the best looking pair of boots I ever saw. How about that? They're beautiful. Come here. What's that I hear about a party? It's a surprise. Every wedding has to have a party afterwards. <laughs> Reception, but who's coming? I don't know one if I can most of them. Oh, oh, that's a country club set. Me de comer esa tuna y aunque me tire la mano. Me de comer esa tuna y aunque me tire la mano. Me de comer esa tuna, me de comer esa tuna, me de comer esa tuna, y aunque me tine la Think they're having a good time? Wonderful. Oh, I'm damn. Well, oh, Juan's a little careless with that Milwaukee champagne. La guila que tu Resato en el dinero. Para su mira no pal, para su mira no pal, para su mira no pal. Pido permiso primero. La vida siendo animal.
Gracias. Gracias. Sí, dígame con devoción, ángel mío. All right, compadre, you are through. Carlos takes over. Oh, easy, bridesmaid. This is our job. Pues ándale, hombre, ándale. Go, little one. Go hold hands with your husband. You're an angel, Carlos. I could use a little hand holding. Beso, quiero dejar, ángel mío, dime que sí, dime que sí, dime que sí. I hid out two plates of food first in the house. You smart woman. Hmm? And a good cook. Oh, well, wait a minute. I did the cooking. You did the carving. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our first party. We're living. People say that for a joke. Yet it can mean so much. You were the one who made me realize I'd been alive without living. Even the hate I thought I had for you was a lie. I couldn't let myself admit I loved you. Do you? As if tonight, all the nights and days ahead of us, were a wedding present from you. You've helped me too. You know that. How? You made me quit running away. Were you running when you first came here? Why? You know why. But not now. You're not running now. You don't blame yourself for anything. No, I don't think so. Yet, here's a funny twist. I only thought of it tonight. I'm in Sam's shoes, don't you see? It's as if a wheel were turning in a circle or something. Sam's wife, Sam's kid. But, then you haven't stopped running, darling. Not until you know Sam's shoes are on Sam's feet. You're wearing boots from a little boy that loves you. You're married to a girl who never really was Sam's wife. Just as you told me. She's really yours. There is no past. Nothing to remember. Just the two of us together now. Listen to those children. Doesn't sound like playing. You're right, that's a scrap. Take it easy. Oh, well, 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 what's it all about? Honey, maybe you better take him back with the others. Go on. Go on, Pablito. Well, come here, Pat. Tell me about it. What happened? Oh, this is just between us chums. No. Well, something must have happened. He said something. Oh, about you? About your mom and me? About my dad. He was playing the moccasin game with those kids, and he heard one of them say he was the son of that bandito Tevlin. Oh, how terrible. I was hoping he wouldn't have to hear about it like that. How would we put it to sound any better? I don't know. I suppose he'll have to be told someday. What should we tell him? The truth. That his father was a stick-up man? I didn't think we knew the truth about that. Well, then you can't turn back now. You can't undo the past. No, but you can find out facts. If there's blame, you can put it where it belongs. Oh, I've had this on my back for a year now. The way I had Sam when I took him down the pass. Why should he have stolen money? He wasn't a criminal. He could always get a job in the oil fields. In fact, I'll bet he was rail hitching back to Bolts of Grandy looking for a job when the payroll car caught up with him, if it did. And another thing. Why was the posse and the police dragged through every cut and cane break between here and the coast, instead of the mountains where I was? At the time, I thought it was just stupid, and yet it seemed wrong to me somehow, even while I was riding after him. 
I'm sure someone in that posse never meant for him to be caught. There's a man alive somewhere who took that payroll and caused Sam's death. And I want him to pay. You can't forget, can you? All right. I don't want this hanging over our heads. Go and do it. And then come back to me. So I traveled back the way I'd come. Only this time I paid for my ticket. I went to the company files and looked up everything they had about the holdup. Oh, by the way, do you happen to remember the name of that, uh, that guard? You know, the one that was wounded? Well, there ought to be a medical report on him there, hadn't there? Mm. Ought to be in here someplace. Valdez. Valdez. That's it. That's it. Here we are. Corporal Valdez. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, senor. Well, you don't remember me, do you? You're not a stranger, senor. For I, since my wound, my memory is not so good. I know about that wound. I was an official at the Bolsa Grande Company when you were brought in. I was the one who sent the doctor to take care of you. Usted? Ah, si. Si. Mr. Vanner. Senor Valdez. I'd like to have a little talk with you. Uh, couldn't we uh, sit down and rest a while? Si, senor. Do you like a cigarette? Muchas gracias. I'm glad you've made such a recovery. But I have serious news for you. My pension. Is it stopped? Well, I don't know anything about that, but the case concerning the holdup has been reopened. I'd like to ask you a few questions. It's a long time ago. Mr. Banner, my memory is bad. Well, I'll try to refresh it. Now, come on, sit down. Let's see, you were assigned with three men as an escort for Earl Mahoney, who was bringing the money. Yes, but that and is In the so mountains, that. the car came up with an American who was walking the tracks. The reports say he had a Tommy gun. Now, try to remember. Did the gringo have the gun, or did he take it from one of the guards? He had it with him, senor. He's plenty bad hombre, this bandido. Track walker with a machine gun. Strange nobody noticed that when you slowed down. A Tommy gun doesn't fit in a man's pocket. He was hiding maybe underneath his clothes. Well, I'll tell you wrong. He grabbed it from one of the guards. Yes, I think he did that. You're lying, Valdez. Not this American, but somebody else had that gun, and that person used it on you. You weren't meant to be found alive, and when you were, somebody warned you to keep your mouth shut. Warned you and paid you, which is how you got that pension you spoke of a minute ago. Senor, I and beg since you. then, you've been afraid of every shadow, haven't you? Even had bad dreams about it. Dreams where you can see the man with the gun firing on the guards, your compañeros, and on you. Who are you protecting, Valdez? Who was the man with the gun? Who took the Bolsa Grande payroll? I must. I must ring the bell at the mission. All right, I'll wait. operations hanging as high as he was. He'd been my last, in fact, my only witness, and he was dead. All I could do now was figure out another angle, even though I knew it was a crazy gamble, strictly a shot in the dark.
Nobody's allowed to drink in here. What do you wish, senor? Ten minutes in your files. I regret exceedingly. That will be impossible. Perhaps you need an opener. I'm sorry. There are positively no exceptions. That's disappointing. This beer is warm. I will get some ice. For ten minutes. This is the file index. It is luck. The keys, you understand, are in the desk drawer. I forbid you to use them. See Mr. Mahoney. Step inside, sir. Mr. Mahoney in? He's busy. All right, I'll wait. You state your business, mister? <coughs> okay, have a talk with him and get back to me. I want a yes or no by 12 o'clock. You'll have it. You wish to see me? Hi, Mr. Mahoney. Lynn Vanner, long time no see. Happy Ben. Doing fair, maybe a little better, no complaints at all. If so I noticed, Earl C. Mahoney Enterprises. <laughs> What's on your mind? I... Uh, come on inside. I don't want to be disturbed. Quite a little place you've got here. Not bad, is it? I picked it up a while back from the estate of General Ibera. Sit down. You know, it's kind of you to drop in. Would you have a spot of cognac? Oh, thanks. I'll come right to the point. I've got a little statement here I'd like you to glance over. <laughs> Not trying to raise a little dough, are you? No, I'm just straightening out some facts. Facts concerning the payroll of the Bolsa Grande Company about a year ago. Tell me something. Yeah. Have you lost your mind? Why, is there some inaccuracy? Inaccuracy? You state here that I, Earl C. Mahoney, planned and executed the Bolsa Grande payroll robbery. That's right. That I myself machine gunned six men and wounded Corporal Valdez. That I then hid out the money. And put the blame on an American oil worker whom we'd met track walking in the mountains. Sam Tavlin. You hadn't figured on him, I'll admit, but uh, finding him the way you did work like a charm for your plan. <laughs> you know, I get a kick out of this. What did you do? Dream it up all by yourself? Not quite. I did some study. As an oil operator, you were running into tough luck. Your finance company was almost broke. You had an option on a new field that you thought would save you, but you didn't have the money to take it up. Two days after the robbery, you took it up, and that was the deal that made you rich. There's a photostat in the memorandum from your own files. So, one day I had no money, the next I had some. What's so unusual about that? You think for evidence like this, I'm going to sign your confession or whatever you call it? Yes, I think you will. Well, you've got guts. I like that. What's the deal, Banner? I want to clear a dead man's name. For clearing dead men's names, I pay 5,000 pesos. That's tops. Not enough. Ten. This deal won't cost you a cent, Mahoney. Except the price of a trip out of the country after you've signed that paper. I suggest you move fast, and once you're out of Mexico, you stay out. This country doesn't like Americans who ignore our laws. And if I don't sign? I think I'll change my mind about that brandy. Help yourself. You know, Vanner, you're a tough man. 
But you don't leave me much choice. I guess I'll have to play along with you. Get up. Come on, get up. Sure, I'd killed him in self-defense, and I should have called the cops and given myself up, tried to make the story stick. It would have been a simple thing to do. I even thought of it, I guess, and yet I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't think straight anymore except to make sure that I had something to fight with if I got caught, and I didn't intend getting caught. Hey, he doesn't want to be disturbed. You told me to come back. Oh, you know best? Yes. Your hat, sir. mancha ayer a ver qué pasó oye y esta ropa de dónde te la robaste no la lotería la lotería sacaste la lotería qué suerte ¿Eh? vente vámonos bueno vámonos Mi amada. 
brazos grandes. Río Mara. Yo quiero ver a Cuba. Sure, by this time they must have the ranch staked out. Padre, yo creo que no está aquí. De todos modos, hay que registrar la casa. Sí. Señora, you understand. Now we must search the house. Very well. Tú buscas allí. El guardia. They've been watching us for a week. Why do they choose tonight to search for him? Because they think they know something, but they don't know enough. Where is he? When they leave, go to the priest out at the foot of the mountains. Muy buen caballo. Tiene una astilla.
father, can't you do something for my arm? My son, if I could help you, I would be glad to. I know. We talked all night. It was coming day very thin, too. The day when I... When you... When I made my mistake. Look. They are here. Years or 30 seconds. If I go out there, I'll die. Come on, Banner! Two minutes, or we'll shoot again, whether you are there or not. Start it. Zellan. Oh, Lynn. Oh, Ellen, you shouldn't have come here. You've done just what they wanted, given them a hostage. Oh, it doesn't matter. You've got to give yourself up. That's something I can't do. But it's the only way. Please listen. Oh, you're hurt. There's nothing. He cannot raise his arm to surrender. Lynn. Well, then you've got to tell them what's happened. Make them understand that you're wounded. It's no use, Ellen. Darling, you've got to listen. I know you kill this Mahoney in self-defense. I'm sure of it. You can make them believe it, too. You can get justice. No, don't you understand what's happened? It's the full circle. This was in the cards. It had to come out this way right from the very first. It's just a scratch. And yet, even if I take my arm this way now, I can't lift it. I can't move it. I can't. Banner, your time is up. to destroy himself. Yes, it is not his wound. He feels he must destroy himself because of something he has done. It has happened to many men. I have seen it. This is in his mind. So, tírale. Put up your hand! Guárdame. Perdón, 
nombre del padre. No sabíamos que estaba usted aquí. Tú estás bien, hijo. Come with us. Have faith, my son. Come. Adelante. 